Hi, I'm Mike Rhodes. I'm from the state of Colorado in the United States. But today I want to introduce you to the wonder and natural environment of my second hometown in Kumano, which is in Wakayama Prefecture, Japan. And uh, I also want to introduce to you Koyasang and the three grand shrines of the Kumano region. Now, both of these places are an integral part of the sites and pilgrimage routes of the Key Mountain Range. And this was designated a World Heritage Site in 2004 by UNESCO. You know, one thing that makes this place so special, that it's only one of three places in the entire planet where a World Heritage Site is a pilgrimage route. The others include the route of Santiago de Compostela, which is connecting Spain and France. And then the third is the birthplace of Jesus, Church of the Nativity and pilgrimage route in Bethlehem, Palestine, a newly designated site. Now, the Kumano was also awarded three stars as a travel destination in the French Michelin Green Guide Japan Guide in 2009, which certainly has raised European interest in these routes. The history of Kumano spreads over more than a thousand years, with pilgrims coming down from other parts of Japan to visit to the sacred Kumano area. There were five main routes where people would tried to travel to the three main shrines in the Kumano area. Those five main routes include the Nakahechi route, which runs through the middle of the Ki Peninsula and leads to the three grand shrines, Ohechi route, which runs along the southern coast, and the Kohechi route, which connects those three grand shrines to that of Koyasan, the path of Koyasan, and then the Ise route, which leads down from Ise Shrine. And one more would be the Omine Okugake Michi, which many of the practitioners of the Shugendo faith would take. The Kumano faith is an interesting mix of a variety of belief systems, including the Shinto faith, or sort of a pure nature worship, uh, Buddhism, and even a form of Taoism. This unique syncretism was important for pilgrims to uh, come to the Kumano area and experience a form of rebirth perhaps to better their own current life or entrance into the next life. Here we are at Hoshimon Oji, a popular spot to lead into Hongu area. And uh, what's important is that this location used to be one of nine gates leading into the Hongu Kumono area. And here, because it was one of five major Ojis called Gotai Oji, they would have ceremonies, rites, and poetry readings. And it's, it's famous and popular even back up to a thousand years ago. In fact, a 12th century poet, Fujiwara no Teika, would write a waka poem here at this very location. Uh, here we are at Kumano Hongu Grand Shrine, which is the center of the Kumano religion that has spread all over Japan over a thousand years. Now, this is the central and final spot on the pilgrimage route that many would take from Kyoto or from Edo period down to uh, this location here. Now behind me are the key buildings for the Kumano Grand Shrine. Three buildings encapsulating the, at least four of the main uh, 12 gods of the Kumano religion. Uh, the one behind me here is for this location, uh, the Hongu Grand Shrine, and then two of the other main gods are down on the other far side. Now each of the gods enshrined there represent the three Sanzan, or the three main shrines of the Kumano area. People would make the pilgrimage, come down south, and visit each of them in the opportunity to be reborn into uh, a better world. Now, this is not the original location of the shrine. It used to be down by the river, about 500 meters down the, down the hill. And that was called Oyunahara, until about 120 years ago when a major flood washed away most of the buildings. Four main shrines were taken from there and rebuilt up here behind us here. Now people from all over Japan and all over the world come here to worship and to seek enlightenment and a better life into the future world. Look at the gorgeous vermilion color of the buildings around me. This is Hayatama Shrine, the Kumano Shrine, one of the three grand shrines of the Kumano area. 
Now after leaving Honggu Shrine, people would take on boats and come on down here to Shingu City to visit the Hayatama Shrine. And uh, what's notable here about the, the gorgeous orange buildings, the symbol, it's a symbol of life, and perhaps because it resembles the color of blood that celebrates this area. Now, the object of worship is up on a mountain called Kamikura, just up the hill. And the, at the top is a, is a rock called Gotobiki Iwa. Gotobiki Iwa is where, uh, according to Japanese mythological legend, the gods descended and visited this area. And once the Akuma no faith propagated in this area, the gods were enshrined in this building behind me here. Now on the grounds is one of the oldest evergreen type trees in the entire country called a nagi tree. And if you have one of the leaves of those tree, it's, uh, it's supposed to symbolize a great uh, importance of unbreakable bond. So it's good to use for friendships. Um, however, if you take one from this side, it's not allowed. Uh, hopefully you can find one in the other areas. After pilgrims arrived here in the Nachi area, they would climb up what was called the Daimon Zaka, or the Great Gate Hill, and arriving here at Kumono Nachi Grand Shrine, which you can see behind me. It's the third Grand Shrine of the area, the Kumono Worship area. After visiting Hongu and Shingu, Nachi would be the third stop along that pilgrimage trail. Now up until 140 years ago, both Shintoism and Buddhism would be worshipped together. And during the Meiji area, those grand areas were separated. Now behind me is uh, the Nachi Grand Shrine, and beyond it is Seigan Toji Temple, which is the first stop on the 33 Kanon Temple uh, pilgrimages here in the Kansai or Kinki area. And beyond that is the highest waterfalls in Japan. At 133 meters, you have Nachi Falls or Nachi Taki, where it is said that a great nature god is enshrined. Koyasan was founded by Kobodai Shikukai. He was born in what is known as Shikoku Island today, and at the age of 18, he entered college in Kyoto to study Chinese classics and, and Confucianism. But he, eventually, he grew dissatisfied with his academic studies and found himself entering into Buddhist asceticism at just the age of 20. At the age of 31, he visited Tang, China, in 804, and two years later he returned to bring the teachings of the Shingon Buddhism faith here to Japan. It is said he established Shingon Buddhism in the year 811, about 1200 years ago, and eventually he was granted permission to establish his center for Shingon Buddhism here on the mountain of Koya in 816. In fact, it is believed that Kukai is still here on the mountain in just a state of meditation. Here we are at Koyasam, the center of the Shingon Buddhist faith. And in this location here is Danjo Garam. It's the training center for the Shingo Buddhism here on Mount Koya area. And this is where Kobodai Shikukai founded his religion here in Japan. Now, behind me is the famed Kompon Daito, this 50 meter pagoda standing behind me here. Despite uh, suffering many fires over the uh, 1200 years that it's been here, it finally was renovated and uh, completed in 19. Uh, 30s and then renovated in 1996 um, to make this solid structure here behind me. Now inside is a 3D mandala that tells you the story of the Buddhist faith, the Shingon faith, and contains four Buddhist structures. Now also on this main ground area is a fantastic bell to the side over here that you can hear anywhere in Koyasan, they say, on a breezy day. Also, there's the San Kono Matsu, just on the side of the other main structure here, the Kondo, on the other side, where it's a three-frond pine, a three-pine needle pine that is supposedly where Kukai, when he left China after learning his, uh, his uh, religious study there, cast it out from his boat and it landed here. And this is where he was determined to, to establish his religion here in Japan.
this is Kongo Buji Temple. Now, it's the main headquarters here at uh, Koyasan, and uh, the building was built in 1593. And inside are a number of gorgeous rooms with paintings on panels from artists from all over Japan. Now you can enjoy a walk along the inside as well as take a tea time on the far end. And there's a gorgeous rock garden in the back where you can enjoy some peace and quiet. At Koyasan, there are 52 temples where you can take part in the Shukubo experience, which allows you to stay overnight in one of the temples, experience morning prayers, and see how the monks live. It also brings you closer to the Shingon Buddhism faith up close. One of the specialties that are provided at these temples is what's called Shojin Jori, which is here before me here. Beautiful array of food. It's very healthy for you and delicious too. You can also try Shakyo, which is writing a sacred sutra just like other monks here at the monastery where you stay. So here we are at Okuno-in, which is the spiritual heart of Koyasam. It's the center of the Shingon Buddhist faith. And around here are 200,000 graves from all walks of life, including the most elaborate to the most solemn. Now along the way you'll find small childlike figures which are actually a form of deity. It's called an ojizo-san and they're decorated with bibs to protect children. Now from the beginning of Ichinohashi to Gobyo where Kukai is said to be laid at rest is two kilometers long. A fantastic natural environment to enjoy once you're here at Koyasan.